Hello, Dostoevsky lovers. My name is Patrick Bergman, and I'm here to talk about different translations of the best book in the world, the Brothers Karamazov, over to English. And um, why? Well, English is the biggest language in the world, and I have Swedish as my mother tongue, and of course that gives me a lot to read the Brothers Karamazov in Swedish. Because I understand everything. <laughs> but since English is the lar largest language and many people read the Brothers Karamazov in English, then I want to help you and see, okay, if I read the same passage from all these different translations, which one appeals to you most? Which one you know, you, makes you see and hear these characters? and make them come alive. So I will now start with um, this one, Constance Garnett. Well, it's a note that says it's used in the Berkeley course. Um, the first official kind of main uh, translation. So uh, we will start off with Father um, the Fyodor. And he's talking to uh, the elder Susima. Um, teacher, he fell suddenly on his knees. What must I do to gain eternal life? It was difficult even now to decide whether he was joking or really moved. Father Susima, lifting his eyes, looked at him and said with a smile, You have known for a long time what you must do. You have sense enough. Don't give way to drunkenness and incontinence of speech. Don't give way to sensual lust and, above all, to the love of money. And close your taverns. If you can't close all, at least two or three. And, above all, don't lie. You mean about Diderot? No, not about Diderot. Above all, don't lie to yourself. The man who lies to himself and listens to his own lie come to, comes to such a point that he cannot distinguish the truth within him or around him and so loses all respect for himself and for others. And having no respect, he ceases to love. So there you have it, the first version. And then we go over to the uh, Ralph Matlow uh, Norton Critical Edition, which is a revision of Constant Garnet, because it was said that she kind of smoothed over the, the language that Dostoevsky is using, which is kind of strange and repetitive and, and, and jumping back and forth. And so, uh, Matlow kind of corrected that and a few other things. So let's see what he, this version says. Um, teacher, he fell suddenly on his knees. What must I do to gain eternal life? It was difficult even now to decide whether he was joking or really moved. Father Susima, lifting his eyes, looked at him and said with a smile, you have known for a long time what you must do. You have sense enough. Don't give way to drunkenness and incontinence of speech. Don't give way, way to sensual lust and, above all, to the love of money. And close your taverns. If you can't close all, at least two or three. And above all, don't lie. You mean about Diderot? No. Not about Diderot. Above all, don't lie to yourself. The man who lies to himself and listens to his own lie comes to such a pass that he cannot distinguish the truth within him and around him and so loses all respect for himself and for others and having no respect, he ceases to love. So this version is quite similar to uh, the Constance Garnett version. Now... I will go over to Peverian Volkonsky, a version that has been both praised and 
criticized uh, for different reasons. Uh, as far as I know, this is the one that's closest to uh, how the Russian is built. And the Russian and Swedish versions, they are very similar. So this is kind of like the Swedish, but maybe people are unused to it or and then some things have fallen out. So yeah, whatever. It's a big discussion. So um, let's hear how they uh, have translated this session. Teacher, he suddenly threw himself on his knees. What should I do to inherit internal life? It was hard even now to tell whether he was joking or was indeed greatly moved. The elder looked up at him and said with a smile, You've known for a long time what you should do. You have sense enough. Do not give yourself up to drunkenness and verbal incontinence. Do not give yourself up to sensuality and especially to the adoration of money and close your taverns. If you cannot close all of them, then at least two or three. And above all, above everything else, do not lie. About Diderot, you mean? No, not exactly about Diderot. Above all, do not lie to yourself. A man who lies to himself and listens to his own lie comes to a point where he does not discern any truth either in himself or anyone anywhere around him, and thus falls into disrespect towards himself and others, not respecting anyone he ceases to love. So, a bit different from... I mean, this is closer to, as I said, to the Russian and Swedish versions, while Matlow he is editing the Gonet version, which is a step away, maybe. I'm not a linguist, but I hear what people say. Okay, so now it's um, the Macduff version, uh, this one, and it has a note saying it's used Harapad, so I know because I, yeah, whatever. Um, and this is hmm, a bit different too, but you, l let's listen and, and see. Um, a master, he said, suddenly falling to his knees. What shall I do to inherit internal life? Even now it was hard to know whether he was joking or whether he was whether he really was in a state of such pious emotion. The elder raised his eyes to him and with a smile pronounced, You yourself have long known what you must do. You have enough intelligence. Renounce drunkenness and intemperance of tongue. Renounce voluptuousness and, in particular, the worship of money, and close your drinking houses. If not all, then at least two or three of them. And principally, above everything else, stop telling lies. You mean the sort of things I was saying about Diderot? No, it has nothing to do with that. The main thing is that you stop lying, telling lies to yourself. The one who lies to himself and believes his own lies comes to a point where he can distinguish no truth either with himself or around him, and thus enters into a state of disrespect towards himself and others. Respecting no one, he loves no one. So this is very different from the other one. And as you heard, pious emotion, you know. Yeah, it's um, it's a bit different, yeah, really. And that version has gone into um, professional narration, which is wonderful. But I think you really need to have English. You, you gain a lot from having English as your first language, you know. And now, last but not least. Uh, the Andrew McAndrew version, which is clearly different from the other ones. Um, he is in one sense close to how Dostoevsky wrote, but he has his own way of expressing it, which for some is a blasphemy <laughs> and for some it's just, ah, oh, music. 
because it's a very different way of using words to to make these characters come alive and so on. So let, let's let's see what he says. Oh teacher, what should I do to gain eternal life? It was hard to tell whether he was still fooling or was now really deeply moved. The elder looked at him smilingly and said, You have known for a long time what to do. You are intelligent enough to see it yourself. Stop indulging in drunkenness and incontinence of speech. Do not give way to sensual lust and particularly to your passion for money. Also, close down your taverns. If you cannot close them all, close at least two or three. And above all, stop lying. You mean that story I told about Diderot? No, I didn't really mean that. The important thing is to stop lying to yourself. A man who lies to himself and believes his own lies becomes unable to recognize truth either in himself or in anyone else and he ends up losing respect for himself as well as for others. When he has no respect for anyone, he can no longer love. So you, you can hear it, that the way MacAndrew he is expressing this is one big step away from the others. Even if he has this amusing incontinence of speech, which is <laughs> a very good expression. Uh, so there you have it. Uh, I could give you a whole lot other um, examples. For example, I, I can I can read the first. Why not? While we are at it. And you are interested in, in the Buddhist Karma Savant translations, but of course, otherwise you wouldn't be here. Ha, coffee. So, strong Swedish coffee. Mm. Oh, oh Lord. Okay. Let's um part one. Book one, the history of a family. We are back to uh Constance Garnett. Fyodor Karamazov. Alexei Karamazov was the third son of Fyodor Karamazov, a landowner well known in our district in his own day and still remembered among us because of his gloomy and tragic death which happened 13 years ago, and which I shall describe in its proper place. A gloomy and tragic death, proper place. Okay, let's move on. And go to the beginning here. <clears throat> okay, this is the Matlow edition. The history of a certain family, Fyodor uh, Pavlovich Karamazov. So here they add the middle name. Alexei Fyodorovich Karamazov was the third son of Fyodor Pavlovich Karamazov, a landowner well known in our district in his own day and still remembered among us, owing to his tragic and obscure death which happened exactly 13 years ago and which I shall describe in its proper place. So now it's a tragic and obscure death and a proper place. <clears throat> so let's see what Pevere and Volokonsky says about this. Now it's called a nice little family. <clears throat> Chapter 1, Fyodor Pavlovich Karamazov. Alexei Fyodorovich Karamazov was the third son of a landowner from our district, Fyodor Pavlovich Karamazov, well known in his own day and still remembered among us because of his dark and tragic death, which happened exactly 13 years ago and which I shall speak of in its proper place. <clears throat> so now it's a dark and tra tra tragic death and we speak of it in its proper place. Okay, Macduff, the story of a certain little family. It's very different from a nice little family. So they, they really differ here. Mm, okay, Fyodor Pavlovich Karamazov. Alexei Fyodorovich Karamazov 
was the third son of a landowner in our district, Fyodor Pavlovich Pavlovich Karamazov, so noted in his time, and even now still recollected among us, for his tragic and fishy death, which occurred just 13 years ago, and which I shall report in its proper context. And so here we end up with a tragic and fishy death in a proper context. Hmm, yeah, interesting. So let's go over to MacAndrew, the last one, and then I will let you get on with your life. Um, then it's even, yeah, it's a peculiar family history. Okay, chapter one, Fyodor Pavlovich Karamazov. <clears throat> Alexei Fyodorovich Karamazov was the third son of Fyodor Pavlovich Karamazov, a landowner in our district who became a celebrity and is remembered to this day because of the tragic and mysterious end he met exactly 13 years ago, which will be described in its proper place. So as you can hear again, this is very different. So you have everything from Garnet to, to Matlow to Pivir and Volokonsky to Macduff and then over to MacAndrew. And um, um, choose carefully because words matter. And some of these have been... For example, Macduff is a bit hard for me to read, but listening to, oh, it's like, ooh, this is good. Tragic and fishy, fishy dish, fishy, fishy, yeah. obscure. Was it an obscure death or a fishy death? Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so, enjoy. Uh, and uh, tell me if you want more reading like this done by me, and I will happily do so, because I like this. Take care.